Hi everyone, Julia Dream here with Rhyme Signatures, the nerdiest music review this side of hiding away from that darn scaly armadillo. And today we're going to be doing a review of the new Roger Waters album, Dark Side of the Moon Redux. Story begins in 19 tickety two. We had to say tickety, cause the Kaiser had stolen our word 20. I chased that rascal to get it back, but gave. Everyone creates art for their own individual particular reasons. Be that for an expression of what is within themselves, a desire to extrapolate a particular emotional state, or perhaps to tell a very specific story which means a lot to them as a creator. There can be any number of reasons to make music, but for me, the most disingenuous reason to do so is for selfish vanity reasons, which sadly is the only thing I can assume that has been Roger Waters' inspiration to do a redux version of the 1973 classic Pink Floyd album, The Dark Side of the Moon. The idea that anyone watching this video needs any kind of introduction to the most famous of all of Pink Floyd's albums is almost laughable, but for the benefit of padding the runtime of this video, let's talk a little bit about this timeless slice of prog rock royalty. If you've never heard this album, I can only assume that you've just never gotten around to it. You've just started out with progressive rock and are working your way through the foundational albums. Or maybe it's just something that's never appealed to you. We all have a reason that we've never listened to something after all. I, for one, have very little King Crimson knowledge outside of Scary Face Man, Sun and Moon Together at Last, and Three Guys in Monochrome. And it's mostly because I just don't have the time to listen to everything, you know? So, moving away from my faltering prog credentials and talking a little bit about the original album and how it came to me to help give context to how I feel about this Redux effort. The year is 1993. I am but a wee babby of seven years old. I'm starting to form opinions, answer back to my parents, and have my own taste in music developing. My dad would frequently play music from bands like Jethro Tull, Deep Purple, Janis Joplin, Roxy Music, and this little band called Pink Floyd. I distinctly remember we had an old VHS with the tail end of the wall on it, you know, the animated section with the scary testicle judge, and this was what preceded three hours of old Tom and Jerry cartoons. But I always loved the music of that part, and there were times where I would be stomping around the kitchen yelling, TEAR DOWN THE WALL, and kept wondering why I was getting concerned looks from visiting grandparents. But needless to say, it was a short, easy, and straightforward leap to convince child me to listen to more music by this weird band. And Dark Side of the Moon was one of the earliest records that I vividly remember listening to and enjoying from start to finish. I loved the cash register noises, I loved the saxophones, I loved the big Wailing Lady song. It really struck a chord with me, and it's always been an album that I think of very fondly. Of course, as I got older, and I listened to it with a more inquisitive and maturing mind, I started to hear things and appreciate things within it that I never really latched onto as a child. The instrumentation, the production, the lyrics and mood of the experience started to feel different, started to make me think much harder about not only what I was listening to while spinning this album, but to other music in general. And I would comfortably call Dark Side of the Moon my gateway drug into the world of progressive rock, and to where I sit with my musical appetites today. So, the idea that this album could have a redux version of it, not just a simple remastering, but a completely reimagined, re-recorded, alternative interpretation of it, seemed absolutely baffling to me. I mean, why on earth would you want to change what is fundamentally a perfect artistic statement? Roger Waters, clearly drunk on his own ego and hedonism, brought on by the fact that this album he was heavily involved with has now turned 50 years old, can try and convince me as much as he wants to that this project was done for reasons other than ego and capitalism, but given how bizarre and utterly confusing the end product is, I'm not buying it, Roger. I'm just not. Now, I'm not going to get into the politics of is Roger Waters insane or not, because quite frankly, I don't want to open that can of worms. Now, good lord, is that one complicated issue, and that ain't the point or purpose of this video. But Dark Side of the Moon Redux serves as the perfect advertisement to me that Waters is clearly intoxicated on his own legend, and a whole bunch of yes-men told him that turning the best album of 1973 into a William Shatner-style beat poetry lounge jazz album was a phenomenally good idea. Plot twist, it was not a phenomenally good idea. Okay, let's make one thing abundantly clear. I don't hate this album as an entity unto itself. 
If you were somehow able to separate this record from its past and enjoy it as an album disconnected from its legacy, I would find it an intriguing thing to listen to in a smoky, dimly lit jazz lounge. It's perfectly fine. There's some cool instrumentation and alternative versions of the much more energetic and interesting original. And honestly, if this was delivered as a purely instrumental album, I think I'd be telling you much nicer things about this. The problem with the album is, unfortunately, Roger Waters himself. Every time you think you can ease into the smooth, molasses-like reimagining of the instrumentation, Waters opens his mouth to deliver some extremely tedious, out-of-place, rambling, spoken-word nonsense that feels completely disjointed from the original lyricism that he so proudly harps on about as being his and his alone. It's not all completely doom and gloom, though. I mean, I actually quite like what he's done with Speak To Me, Breathe, and Us and Them. I feel like this new approach he's gone for works quite well on these tracks. But when On The Run kicks in and all the claustrophobic, disturbing, experimental and unsettling mood of the original is gone, because Waters takes the opportunity to word vomit a monologue about absolutely bloody nothing. It just keeps on going. It makes little to no sense and completely blindsides the incredible mood of the original track. It's extremely frustrating and unfortunately sets the tone for much of the album. Time, one of the most powerful, memorable, and interesting songs in Pink Floyd's entire catalogue with one of David Gilmour's best guitar solos. All neutered, it's just a tedious, plodding, dirge-like experience. No solos, but plenty of waters mumbling into the microphone again. Now look, I understand what he's trying to do with this redux, you know, to make a recontextualized version of the original concept, but as told by a man who's so much older than he was when the original was made. It all comes across to me as a man who has failed to understand that no matter how much of Dark Side of the Moon was his baby, the reason why it was so good, why it was so successful, and why it is so beloved is due to the contributions of the entire band. Pink Floyd was never just Roger Waters, it was everyone. The entire band made the album as good as it was, and this Redux version goes on to prove that point by showcasing how frightfully dull this is in comparison. Things don't get any better as we plod through this swamp-like droning. Great Gig in the Sky, once famous for the absolutely siren-like wailing from Claire Torrey, is now replaced by another rambling monologue from Waters, as he seems incapable of understanding the idea that the sound of silence from his microphone would be of an enormous benefit to this album. The empty spaces eh, are what made the original such a success. The instrumental fills and interludes were extremely important to the flow and feel of it, but now we barely get a moment away from his tedious Look at me, it's me, Roger Waters, I'm talking again additions to the record. There were so many moments on this redux that I wish I could just, you know, physically pinch Waters' lips shut and just actually allow the quite nice, mellow, stripped back and pleasant instrumentation to take centre stage for once. It feels like every minute that I get to actually enjoy part of this album, Waters comes along to spoil my fun by making this into what I can only describe as a high-budget ASMR record for an egocentric octogenarian. The most positive thing I can really say about this album is that it manages to shine a spotlight on the original, making it appear even better and brighter than we already knew it to be. Listening to the Redux version is like watching any of the Disney live-action remakes. It's annoying, pointless, playing on your nostalgia, and feels as if it's been made from a purely exploitative and money-driven motivation. All the joy, charm, and authenticity of the original has been scrubbed in favour of a more gritty and self-aware M.O. The original album had little legacy and fanfare behind it. Yes, Pink Floyd were a well-established band at the time, but Dark Side of the Moon was written with passion and artistry. This redux version has been written with the background of let's reimagine one of the most famous, financially successful, and influential albums of all time. And it feels so soulless and cynical that I can barely bring myself to get all the way through it. So, what else can I say about Roger Waters' Dark Side of the Moon Redux? This has been a tremendously frustrating album to both listen to and review. I always strive to be as positive as I can be on this channel, and I always prefer to cover new releases that I want to encourage people to listen to. But when one of my favourite albums of all time is given such a drubbing by one of the main people involved in its creation, I find it difficult to stay silent on the matter. 
Now this album isn't entirely without merit. I kind of enjoy the lo-fi vibe of the instrumentation when it's allowed to take centre stage. The lyrics do feel more pertinent in the context of an 80-year-old man delivering them, but at no stage does any of the new delivery have the emotional impact of the original recording, oftentimes coming across as unpleasant to the ear, awkward or intrusive, and I find myself just wishing that Waters would have allowed the album's instrumental tone and mood to carry it across the finishing line, rather than giving us another dreary, tedious spoken word monologue. I can honestly think of very little reason to listen to this album over the original, and in that respect it has failed as a redux version, which for my money should be providing a sufficiently different and enjoyable experience to allow it to stand separately to the original, rather than being compared to it. But given the original's extraordinary legacy, it's damn near impossible to do so with this one, and has ultimately resulted in an album that I found tedious, plodding, and has absolutely failed to justify its existence to me. I would ultimately recommend that you avoid this one, perhaps give it a curiosity stream, but really there's nothing on here that has given me cause to ever choose listening to this version over the original. The Lunatics were unfortunately well and truly in the hall when they gave the go-ahead on this one. This is all of course my opinion guys as you know, so if you have listened to Dark Side of the Moon Redux, please tell me what you thought about this record in the comments down below. If you did like this video, please do share it with anyone else who you think would possibly enjoy it, and please do consider subscribing to the channel for more content. I will leave my link tree down below, where you will find all of the places to find me on social media, as well as a link to my coffee page if you're feeling particularly generous and want to help support the channel. But until next time guys, as always, keep your rhyme signatures extremely odd.